Yeah. Uh, Patera, uh, I don't want to get off Ken yet. Uh, what did you do? You get along with Ken? Did you have you been in his company? Never been. Never really have, have, have spent any time with him. Just always had a lot of respect for him. Yeah. You know, because he was fucking. He was a great fucking lifter. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, he was a fucking big, strong. He was a 500-pound bench press fucker. Like back oh. when, you know, you know, none of this shirt shit. You know, Kim, Kim Patera's a fucking man. Yeah. I mean, and I give a fuck, like, if you don't get, I don't know how many people out there have done any kind of fucking time, but you don't fucking just bring up two years of fucking somebody doing fucking time. Like it's, oh, the McDonald's incident. No, motherfucker, it was two years of my life in a fucking stinky fucking prison, is what he said. No. Well, I, I enjoyed the segment, but I, I but I, I do feel that when you interview somebody that, you know, that that anything worthwhile, uh, or noteworthy, I should say, I in can't their life, believe you that, have to ask about. You have I can't to. believe that fucking, like, if I was Ken, I would have, I would have had that, that I would have owned that piece of tape. That would not be fucking circulating. Oh, that was released. That was put out as part of the the DVD I know. release. Yeah, and I'm just saying that that would not. It, I would finish. I'd be done right there. I would have got up and we would have been finished. And I would have said, "Now we can start over," and that never sees the light of day, or we're fucking done. And and I'm sure Ken was like me. You get your money ahead of time, so. He, um, <clears throat> I never worked with Ken. I wish I did. My favorite Ken Patera story, though, was <clears throat> we were waiting for, uh, there was a flight that was delayed. I had to do a shoot with, uh, Greg Gagne, actually. And he, the flight was, there was snow in Minnesota, so it was taking forever. So we're sitting in the hotel bar, and it's one of those deals where the convention's in town, right? So the bar, the, all the boys are in the bar, and I think Honky was at our table, and we're just sitting waiting. And I'm watching, and I can see the the door, the main entrance of the hotel. Guys are coming in with their bags. Some of them go right to the bar. Some of them go to their room, whatever. So I see Ken come in, and Ken is driven by somebody, and he walks. Uh, the guy walks Ken into the bar, and he finds the other shoot interview producer that is working with Ken that night, and he points at me. He's like, "Yeah, you're working with so and so over there." Now, this shoot interview producer is drinking a banana daiquiri. Now, we're in a bar with wrestlers, so it's green and brown bottles everywhere except this guy who's got a banana daiquiri that he's sipping with a straw. He might have even had an umbrella in it. Ken, from across the fucking bar, in his booming voice, looks over. He goes, him? He's got a cunt drink. <laughs> he's screaming. Everyone looks at him and goes, I'm working with the guy with the cunt drink. He just walked in from outside and he's screaming the cunt drink in the bar. Loved him from that day forward. How can you not? Man's man. Man's man.